very far apart from each other. On my father's not like that. Having spent lots of years of his life living on his own, he thinks cooking is, is rather than an art or a talent, a very necessary skill. Which it is because it's much healthier than getting food from outside and it's much easier on the wallet. Incidentally, he also considers himself as quite a master chef, but that point is a predicate. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Postmaster, a real man cooks his own food. This is a statement which keeps on bouncing around the walls of my house. It's usually directed at me. Now, apart from a scathing attack on my masculinity, the statement serves to highlight a very fundamental flaw in my upbringing, which is my inability to make a meal for myself. So in a bid to actually fix this flaw, whenever I'm free at home, my parents usually call me to the kitchen to help out. My sister also calls me to the kitchen to clean the dishes because when well, she's too lazy to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what happens is, imagine a situation it's summer break, you're coming home from college, the sun is out in full force, it's a very hot day. You've changed two buses, you spent five hours in the unreserved compartment of the Indian Railways, just because you didn't have the foresight to book a ticket in advance. <laughs> you step into the house, on one side, you have the softest couch known to mankind, and it goes back 180 degrees. <laughs> and right next to it, there is an ice cold bottle of a beverage of your choice with perspiration which is flowing down the bottle and the bottle and the couch is seductively whispering your name, beckoning you towards it. And on the other side, in the kitchen, there is a bowl of shrimp which has to be cut in three. <laughs> Where would you go? Couch. Shrimp. Couch. Okay, I would go to the couch. <laughs> if the shrimp is not cooked. Yeah, I would go to the couch. But that's when the call from the kitchen comes. This has been the past seven years of my life. So over the very few hours I've actually spent in the kitchen, I've developed a set of guidelines to help me survive. Now I'm going to share some of them, but not all because I'm writing a book and my publisher will pay me only if I sell more than a fixed amount of books. So first off, I don't like knives, or rather they hate me. Whenever I try to use a knife, I end up cutting everything other than the actual intended target. <laughs> Includes the board the cloth behind the board, <laughs> the fingers on both hands. I don't know how it goes to both hands. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my dad usually tells me this story about uh, a cousin of his who became very adept with knife work. So he's this fresh hotel management graduate. Like all Malayalis, after graduation, he took the first flight out to Gulf. <laughs> <laughs> His family had actually set him up as a trainee chef in a uh, went to do hotel there. So he was standing in front of the hotel, full of hope and aspirations in his eyes. They lead him into the kitchen. When they lead him out of the kitchen, give him a set of knives and a sack of onions and ask him to clean it and slice it. Two weeks, day in and day out. <laughs> Needless to say, after that experience, he's become an expert and he makes the thinnest slices I've ever seen. I mean, they're almost transparent. This is the first lesson any budding cook chef should know. You should start with the basics, master the basics. The road to being comfortable in the kitchen is full of scorched pots, cuts and bruises. The second one is quite uh, personal to me. It's constant vigilance. Now you're going to make a fine meal for yourself, maybe for your family, for a significant other. Stay in the kitchen and avoid all distractions. <laughs> I learned this from personal experience. I was about 13 or 14 years old and I like uh, Popeyes. <coughs> that crunch when you bite into a crispy deep fried Popeye, it emits some sort of a frequency that just resonates with the inner swirl. I think it completes all <laughs> no. So th naturally that's one of the first things I actually learned to make for myself. So here's a science lesson. When you heat oil in a pan, first it heats up. Then it starts smoking, and finally it catches on fire. I saw the last part. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, I put the pan of oil on the stove. I put it on high flame. I went back to the living room to watch television. And got distracted. So about half an hour later, there was a very distinct smoky smell coming from the kitchen. I rush in, and you all see the campfire with the fuel, <laughs> which is touching the sky. I had the same thing in my kitchen. 
picture with the flames licking the ceiling. <laughs> there were scotch marks in the ceiling. First impulse was to throw water on it, but that's a very bad idea because hot oil and water, they don't really mix. <laughs> Second, and I think the more sensible one was to call mom, because she is a mother and uh, they're very dexterous. They have a solution for everything. That's what I did, but not immediately. First, I have to establish a very solid alibi to make sure I don't get blamed for it. <laughs> so after about five minutes, I called her. We somehow managed to fix the problem using a wet cloth. And after about a minute of very severe interrogation, my alibi just about completely fell through. <laughs> and my left butt has never worked the same. <laughs> so now I'm not going to repeat that experience ever again because pain is an excellent feature. <laughs> All that being said, Cooking, if done properly, is, is very relaxing. In fact, some mental health experts even suggest cooking as a way of reducing the symptoms of anxiety and depression. <coughs> Whatever it is, anything made with your own two hands, with your own sweat and blood, will always taste amazing to you. The fruits of your labor is infinite. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't force others to eat the food of your food. Over to you, Mr. TMOD. TMOD!